Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Today, we'll be analyzing the newest episode of Disventure Camp, which is the premiere of Disventure Camp All Stars. Before we begin, I just have to say, what a way to start off this season. I'm already adoring it so much. The animation, the voice acting, the writing, it's all improved. And it's just so great to see. For this video, we will be having four sections which are the following episode analysis overall episode thoughts next boots or next episode theories before trailer conclusion let's just dive right into the video which i hope you enjoy ah don't worry i'm sure this is our year to shine beginning the episode we see crystal call the contestants what i am wondering why did we see just a few get the call, while others not? For instance, we didn't get to see Ellie or Gabby receive the call. Obviously this does not downgrade the episode whatsoever, I'm just curious. Also, great to get a quick insight on the campers before anything else. Flipping to Crystal, we see her introduce and Ray welcome us back to Disventure Camp. The time skip is revealed to be two years for us one, one year for us two. I did expect a somewhat larger time skip given the designs but hey still cool we then learn that they have gained the budget for a private jet and are heading off to pick up everyone in their different places of the world we start off the episode with meeting up with jake and miriam where it is revealed miriam has been having some problems that come with her age which quite frankly scares me i don't think they will go for the darkest route however Miriam won't be coming out of this season perfectly okay. To Miriam and Jake on the plane, Jake expresses worry for Miriam, which she immediately downgrades. Miriam to me personally will be more of an early boot, think this and the upcoming scene implies her arc, and maybe, her elimination will be a reference to her age and interesting direction to take a character I had no clue what they were going to do with. To the interview with Emily, we hear what Miriam had done with the money, which is get herself a beach home and assist Jake in moving out with his parents and heck yay more Jake development. This character to me personally has been a bit bland, and so it's great and interesting to learn more about his motives and home life past his grandparents or past traumas. We then move to Jake and Miriam being confirmed to stay in contact, that is just great to hear. Then we flip to the uncomfortable questions again, more about Miriam's age catching up to her, and how Jake hasn't forgotten Tom, and since Miriam knows, she legit asks how Tom has been doing, Jake is still in denial which, I wonder how long it will take for him to realize. Going to Ally and Hunter which Ally has been confirmed to have an entirely new VA, I think she knocked it out of the park. These two are the only ones I am somewhat worried with, given the fact Ally still is as bland in personality as before, and I personally am not interested in seeing a fighting couple all season, but hey, who knows, it could go well. Speaking of which, them becoming canon is definitely interesting, I'm not mad but I still just see them as completely platonic. We flip to Crystal saying that electronic devices aren't allowed she lied. Rhea, and he'll use them both later on, and we also flip to Miriam saying Ally and Hunter were her favorites. Which like I get Hunter, but Ally, no offense, to any Ally fans watching, haha. Then we go to Tom, who he is just so happy, to talk about recognizing an old friend. Then we see the most awkward, conversation in Disventure Camp history. Jake and Tom both trying to find the words to fix this silence, Miriam just, being like you should've called, and we all know this is nowhere near the end of this. Also, Jake smiling so much when Tom is there. Slightly, heartbreaking for him? I don't know. Then we go to Ellie and Gabby. Ellie is worried about returning to the show that started the memories of it, all, with Gabby being the best, trying to lift her spirits up right away. We then, get to see Tess and Ellie interact, with Ellie asking if she got her text. With Ellie, soon revealing that her and Tess go to the same fashion university, there's a few questions I have to go over here. First off, did Gabby move to New York with Ellie? It's confirmed Ellie is American and Gabby Canadian. Or maybe she was already in America. I'm just very curious on that. Second off, a quick theory of mine. We know Ellie did those interviews more on that later. I think that's how she gained the money to go to fashion school. She didn't win us one, 
meaning no money but I guess she figured out another way to get it. Maybe not the best way, but still. Quickly got to mention this before we continue Gabby and Ellie is, confirmed y'all. It's confirmed. It's confirmed. Then we see the reunion between Tess, Ally and Hunter, which is wholesome, we also learn that Tess actually encouraged Eli to confess to Hunter which did kinda shock me but love her being supportive and great for her following her dreams. Then we flip to Ellie and Gabby, with everyone mad at Ellie for her interviews, we then see Emily interviewing Ellie about her interviews, which she states she never said anything that bad. Let's review them, shall we? I heard that Tom still ignores Jake's calls. Can you blame him? Dealing with Jake should count as community service. And Tom's no better. I mean, the guy's an idiot. Who goes on to reality TV as a spy? So, I admit, I did burst out laughing when she said the Jake line. I think it makes sense in Ellie's character as she hates him, but is it justified? Is it right? Heck no, her comments on Tom though. She is partially right there. It is a reality TV show, there was a high chance he would get caught. Though, I wouldn't necessarily call Tom an idiot, except in the Fury situation, but even then it was under pressure. On to the next interview. Miriam didn't deserve to win. Faking your own death just to test my sympathy? She's twisted. If that happens again, I'm letting her go towards the light. To me, Ellie has every right to be mad at Miriam for what she did last season, especially given it did ruin her dreams again argue if it's justified or not if you want lol. But saying you'll let her see the light. Really Ellie. Just really. Also, I fear this may be some insane foreshadowing. Here we go to the next one. The purple team was a disaster. How did Ashley not see through Fiore immediately? Alec and I knew from the start. But hey, the girl lives on a farm in Texas. Her intelligence matches her home life, that's all I'll say. Ellie was right in the beginning the purple team was a disaster. But the shade on Ashley was unnecessary. Ellie herself couldn't figure out that Fiore was evil until explicitly told to her. And Ashley didn't even do anything to her. I would more so understand if she did, but like, here we go with the next interview. Gret is honestly one of, if not the worst person I've ever met. I heard she's flipped things around recently, but I don't buy it. Alec told Fiore he wished his son was more like her. First off, Alec, your standard for children is alarming. And second, if I were Alec's son, I'd never want to see my dad again. Like, poor kid. He said that on international television. He's a real piece of work. I put these two interviews together because both are basically completely true. Gret is one of my personal favorite female characters, but in the beginning of her character I did find her annoying at times, and I'm also not completely thinking Gret changed her personality too much. On Alec, her line first off Alec, your standard for children is alarming, had me laughing so hard also again, accurate. We see Gabby thinking that Ellie went a bit too far, with Ellie stating she needed the money from those interviews earlier theory holds true. Am I slightly thinking this will lead to some fighting or conflict between the two? Maybe? Again they are on the same team so we will see how it goes. On to Connor and Rhea, with Connor just complimenting Rhea right off the bat. I think Connor believes the good Rhea is still there, and he wants to find it, whereas Rhea does want her real personality to shine, but can't she finally, has her dreams, the fame, as a villain, and she'll do anything to uphold, the image, even if it means badmouthing the one person who still cares, about her. This conflict will definitely develop more as she's on the villains, team with Connor. I'm excited. We see her badmouth Connor and do an interview, then we see Connor meet up with Hunter and Ally and Gabby fangirl over Rhea which wholesome. I do need to see how Rhea and Ellie interact though. To the interview, the main thing I haven't reviewed yet is the question of them being a couple. The age gap still leans me the wrong way but hey, if it doesn't for you, more power to you. Also, them saying it's complicated perfectly sums them up so I'm just going to move on to Crystal destroying Ashley's farm. Then again this show seems rich so they can probably pay it all off. Then we get confirmation, Wishley is still happy and together and I just, as a Wishley fan, this 
makes me so happy. Then we see Ashley immediately go to Ellie and say, there's no bad beef between the two. Which, I respect that. But I feel there's a strategic motive behind it. Ellie not only got her out last time, and remember, she said they would regret it. Anyway, Om um can't get over the fact Ellie called him an idiot. Then we see, Lake with Sophia and Rosa. We were robbed of Sophia's screen time. She's so sweet. And I can't get over Rosa's other line just to destroy Yul. Everyone hates him so much it's way too funny. Then we see Lake say hello to Tess, which did y'all see the mood change? New friendship. I don't know though, that seemed oddly. More than friends, it's not a bad idea. I just did not expect the idea of it at all lol. Also Jake being a fantasy novel fan. Finally, this is the most we've learned about Jake for a while. We then see James and Iden with the friendship group reuniting. It's so wholesome. We then see Iden ask Rhea to apologize for letting him almost perish with Rhea refusing. To the interview, we learn James has a sister, and he's been spending that money a lot on traveling and things. And one more thing, Aiden's line made me just cringe per se. Then we see Gret and Alec, which Gret has been saying she's changed so she can sell things. I don't know how much she changed personality-wise, but hey, maybe I'm wrong here. We then see this show has an unlimited budget apparently, Alec, has not been doing okay after losing his family in Fury, we also see Gret, say Crystal forgot y'all. Then he appears, suggesting to run people over, he never changed. We then see Gret happily running to y'all, and everyone, is horrified at you regret being canon it's way too funny. To Gret's interview, we learn the two met at some brand deal, and the Tam, Patreon name reference lol. And we also learn that Gret's old self can easily be brought up if triggered. And then the entire next scene lol. We also learn Yell's manager has him on speed dial because he can't go without five seconds of saying something extremely offensive to a group of people. He's also going insane. Yell's interview reveals he got a new manager. And we also learn he's here to show his real self. Oh no! And we learn Fiori got sent to boarding school and somehow got her hands on tranquilizers. She has also not changed, in the slightest, in fact, she's probably a bit worse than beforehand. Also, her introduction is just perfection. The meme reference with Yell and Fury's first interaction they are going to hate each other, and Ashley just, being like is this legal to perfect. We see most campers just chilling, then we flip to a conversation between Alec and Fury, where both still have bad blood but also, I feel still somewhat, care about one another. Something I do find very interesting is these two, aren't on the same team, so how much are they really going to interact? I guess we will see how their dynamic goes. We meet the staff, being Marcus, Nina Supremacy, Oliver, Emily, and then we get to see Trevor and Derek as interns. I just am curious to see how their and Oliver's dynamic will play out. We flip to them back in prison, with Trevor singing, and then both him and Derek are brought out to meet Emily. Which, she offers them out of prison, in exchange for becoming interns in DCAS. Which Trevor agrees to ASAP. And both are again the exact same as before. Crystal lies to the campers next, saying they can't land and therefore they will have to jump using parachutes, which will decide the teams. They also must leave their belongings behind. Once campers intervene, Crystal reveals the prize is now 3 million. Where did they get this budget? Then, Ellie jumps with Gabby because wholesome I just, Rhea pushes Iden off a plane because, why not? Crystal reveals the lie to Oliver, who doesn't care that much, then we see the teams revealed. I will be reviewing the teams real quick, starting with the team I'm rooting for the least to the one I'm rooting for the most, and basic overall thoughts on each. This means we will be starting off with the pink team. The pink team looks like a wreck in a sense. Basically everyone hates each other. The storyline I'm not too sure of yet, Eli and Hunter are here so, I just hope Eli gains something called a personality. I'm excited to see Ashley here, mainly her and Fury's rivalry. Jake being on the same team as, James does send alarm bells, but hey, maybe James will actually give some advice to Jake. I also feel like this team will be going on a team victory type run, as many characters I'm seeing going early Fiori, James, 
Ally and Hunter are on this specific team. Some of the dynamics I'm interested to see flourish however, otherwise, I'm not rooting for this team to win that many competitions. This allows us to shift to the yellow team which should probably be renamed the villain team. We have Alec, Rhea, Gret, and y'all all on the same team, which, if they team up, it's over for everyone else. Speaking of, Connor and Miriam are true outliers on this team. Miriam I think is so gone the second this team loses, especially given the fact she is a previous winner. Connor also seems like he's mostly here to serve for Rhea's good side to return, but I'm intrigued. The main reason I'm rooting for this team over the other is I feel overall, they have better characters than Pink itself, and I also feel the potential of the villains all on the same team which can cause such chaos interests me much more than seeing Ally and Hunter fight lol. Moving on to such a banger of a team blue team. This team is literally the fan favorite team, having so many people the fandom really likes. Dynamic wise, Gabby and Ellie are on the same team ah. We also know that Tess, Ellie and Gabby are somewhat friends so I do think that will develop, and given Lake and Tess's earlier interaction, I feel that will develop as well. Given the intro for the season, Tom and I then will be interacting, and it will make Jake jealous so they gotta be on at least good terms. My worry this team is way too off. They probably will go for the team Amazon type way, which means anytime these people eliminate a player, ID goes down, something more I'm worried on the only person here with villainous tendencies is Ellie, so is she going to cause the drama for the blue team? Also, how the heck is Tom going to survive an elimination ceremony? Ellie and Gabby are together, they are friends with Tess, Tess is friends with Lake, who is friends with Iden, Tom is friends with no one, and even if he gets closer with Iden and he votes with Tom, Lake would probably stick with the girls so. Tom as the first boot for Blue, but that wouldn't make sense anyway. These teams are going to be interesting and entertaining, and I can't wait. Let's go into my overall thoughts on the episode. Ah, don't worry. I'm sure this is our year to shine. This absolutely could be recency bias, but this is one of my favorite pilots for a show like this. The characters, the arcs, the writing, the comedy it was, all done spectacularly, it all felt so natural too. If this is just the start of the quality this season, we are all in for such a banger of a season. If I had to give any critiques, I do wonder why some characters like Tom, Ashley didn't get any interviews with Emily, and what was that Iden line. But even then, that doesn't really take away anything from this episode. I am excited to see the next one and how the team dynamics do play out. Animation was also great as usual, voice acting too. Also, I don't know if I'm the only one who noticed this, but did the S to VAs get better microphones than before? It sounds like it anyway, except Rosa. On to my next episode predictions before trailer. Ah, don't worry. I'm sure this is our year to shine. As stated, the next boot for yellow is easily Miriam. She's the most outlied on her team. When it comes to pink team, we know Ally and Hunter have to stay to fight so they cannot go. Fiori is the only villainous one, Ashley is Ashley, so she has to stay, meaning Jake or James. Jake has to stay for jealousy, which leaves James. Not only does he barely have any connections, but he is the only one without a clear story ahead of him. Now on to Blue, team's potential first boot. As stated earlier, right now, Om seems like he could go, but I don't think that makes sense given his Jake storyline. This is going to hurt me to suggest, but it might be Gabby going from my original winner prediction to getting an earlier boot lol. However, she is the only one without a clear storyline ahead of herself. Ellie is hated by everybody so she needs to fix that. She also needs to develop her friendship with Tess, etc. Tom has his Iden or Jake situation. Iden has his Tom or Jake situation. Lake and Tess have their dynamic then you have Gabby. Which yes, Gabby and Ellie are. But what else? What else can she really do? Maybe again, I'm wrong here, but I feel like Gabby will sacrifice herself so Ellie can stay in game again. 
It is only episode 1 here though, we don't even have set team dynamics so watch me be wrong all. When it comes to episode 2, I think it might not be an elimination and a reward challenge instead. We have 21 episodes to go, and these people's dynamics need to be formed, and I feel like giving an episode for the team dynamics to be set then starting eliminations in episode 3 would work well. I do want to predict more, but without team dynamics set, nor knowing the twists of the season or the nature of the challenges, isn't easy haha. More will definitely be predicted once the trailer drops, and I'm again excited to see more of the season. Let's just flip to the conclusion. Ah, don't worry. I'm sure this is our year to shine. This episode again was just incredible, and seeing more of this series is something I am so excited. What were your opinions on this episode, and what are your theories? I would love to hear it in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope to see you again on the channel. Have a wonderful day or night.